Um, everyone, see my screen. Pavel, you might want to mute. No, I'm no, muted. Oh, sorry, me. Sorry, we just muted you, Pavel. There was a bit of a um, noise. All right. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Hear me okay? Yes? Yep. Looking? Yep. Cool. All right. Um, so, uh, I've been working on a little project which started off as a side project, but is happening now um just to see how easy it was to get swagger uh auto generating from our um nancy api uh turns out it was fairly easy to get most of the way but then there were some snags uh, as with any project i guess um just a brief introduction to swagger if you're not familiar with it um swagger is uh started out uh as a uh, rest api um documentation system um, it's primarily based around uh, an open spec. So um, Swagger changed the name of the spec to OpenAPI uh, back in 2016. So um, they just released uh, officially the uh, OpenAPI version 3 today, uh, which I found out as I went to the website. Um, but uh, I've been work doing all of this in, in OpenAPI 2, so um, it's very REST-based, uh, um, aimed specifically at documenting a REST API. Um, the benefit of the tooling is that once you have the spec created, there's a bunch of automated tooling to support that. So, um, for example, the UI that um, shows all of the nice, um, the, the, the everything uh, laid out for you, um, which I'll show in a sec. The, there's also code generation tools, um, so you can generate uh, your client side from uh, a, an open API spec, etc., um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, um, what does it look like? So, this is the Octopus uh, UI, which uh, I don't know if a lot of you have seen this. Um, this is uh, Swagger UI, so it's it's actually uh, just a set of JavaScript files which take the um, the specification uh, and then interprets that and generates all of this uh, lovely UI for us. So um, uh, this this was basically automatically done once I get the, the API working. So I just the the, the the real guts of it is getting this file generated. So there's uh, Swagger supports YAML and JSON. So there's two um, there's two endpoints for that. So there's a JSON endpoint and a YAML endpoint, which is the same data. Um, so uh, what have we got here? So the Swagger uh, implementation is just defining uh, all of our paths um, in the REST API, uh, and then a bunch of text, so summary, uh, parameters. Um, this is the bit where it gets hairy. So defining these parameters uh, is, uh, well, let, let's go into the code and I'll, I'll show you uh, how this is all working. Um, so, where are we? Okay, so let's, let's take a module, for example. So Nancy modules uh, load um, and, and you have all of these paths. Um, for each path you define uh, some call. So there, uh, you have to uh, return a, a response descriptor. Um, and there's some help methods to create um, sort of template response descriptors. So there's a list all, which will just list all of the resources load or load a single resource, index shows uh, or lists all resources on an indexed page. So you can do um, paging with an indexed call. Um, create to create a resource, modify a resource, uh, delete a resource, um, all, all your standard sort of CRUD actions on a REST API. Um, and these, these, were, these were great. These mean that, for example, with load, I, I can look at the load code and I know that all response descriptors that have load will take an ID parameter. 
So that way I can just automate that and go, okay, every, every response descriptor that's a load has an ID parameter, I can add that to the spec. The problem is these custom actions. So these custom actions are response descriptors that take in um, an action class of some sort, and that action class reacts to the, the web request and can do anything. It can request parameters in the path, it can request uh, objects in the body. Um, there's very little uh, structure around what these actions can do. Um, and that's, to give you an idea, so the response descriptors, oh, pausing, pausing, come on. Uh, I, I was doing di diagrams of all of the different parts. So we have here the, um, the response descriptors. Um, this is probably too small to read, but I'll just, I'll just point out the, the various parts. These are all standard response descriptors. So you've got create, modify, delete, uh, the two index, index and child index, uh, list all, load, load by, uh, load by slug. So these are the standard response descriptors, uh, not supported in file uh, response descriptors as well are over here. And then you've got these two custom action response and a custom query response descriptors. And these are the two that, that have no predefined logic behind what they take in their parameters or uh, in the body. So um, they, these take a responder and here is if this will load. Take, this is all of the custom responders that are in uh, the project at the moment. As you can see, there's quite a lot and you have to go through each one and, and sort of read the source code to say, okay, what is the parameter that this is taking in, if there's any? What are the responses that it has? Whether it's a, here is the two, you know, 200 response or a 400 bad request response, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's uh, not ideal, um, especially going forward, because if we hard code what each of these has for now, that's fine. But if we add any more or change them, that, you know, we, we want with this to be generated automatically. Um, so uh, that's, uh, that's that. Um, okay, so how, how is this Swagger API generated? Um, in Nancy, there's a, uh, a system called a route metadata provider, which uh, just has um, two, two methods. The second method uh, here is, is the, the one we care about. It's basically adding a custom object to each route defined in Nancy. So um, what I can do is for each, for each module, um, for each route defined in that module, I, this method is called and I can create an, a metadata object and then try and reflect through the module code and the route description code and, and get some information out of that. So um, we do things like uh, pull out the tag, um, which comes from the module name. Um, we try and pull out a summary, which uh, if there's no summary available, then it, it it's throws this. This is a sort of a temporary message just so that in the UI it shows up and I, I know that that's not a completed um, reflection. Uh, it's not, that, that path has not been fully worked out in the reflection yet. Um, you get some resource names. Um, so uh, in the Swagger UI, um, you can actually, so these are all the paths, but if you scroll down to the bottom, you can then also see the, the resources that the paths are using. So um, an account resource, for example, this is, this is generated from the type. So um, type information has to be passed through the system uh, and extracted out from the source code. So, um, so I've got the convention based, oops. Um, so I've got the convention based loading here. So for example, a load response descriptor is, uh, as I said, we know it has an ID parameter uh, and it returns an okay response with the 
uh, resource type um, output. Um, and that's where I said summary as well, just so I go, okay, I know that that's set. Um, again, this is not necessarily ideal because if the logic for the load response descriptor ever changes, this needs to be updated as well. Um, but that, that got me most of the way there. Um, what I'm doing now though is trying to modify the Nancy system to give us this information um, statically from the type. So um, eventually these all will be replaced with the new system and that the new system will also handle the custom action uh, response descriptors and custom query response descriptors. So um, how does that look in an actual uh, query? Um, okay, uh, where is it? There. So, um, what it'll look like is uh, I've got a base class here, which is an example. Um, it used to be in the responder, you used to have a parameters object, which um, used to have a lot more references. I'll, I'll, um, I've been cleaning them up. This parameters object is is then used, uh, for, for example, it was used as like parameter dot ID. And that was how the ID was gotten from the, um, the, the, the path. Um, in the query. Now we have this system where you specify a parameter uh, in advance as a static field uh, of the type uh, of, of the responder. And then in the query itself, you, you just ask that field to get the value for this particular execution. Um, it's, it's a bit of a hoop, but it means that with this registration, I can, I can now iterate over this type and go, what are all the registered parameters? Pull out the name, pull out the description. Um, if there's a type other than, well, I can pull out the type as well. Um, and then pulling out all of that information, I can generate the, the Swagger uh, document from that. Um, so that's, that's done here. Um, and then, yeah, so once, once this metadata object is built up, uh, it's basically attached to the route object in Nancy. Um, and then in the, uh, I don't have it open, but um, in, in the Nancy object, uh, in the Nancy module that defines those Swagger routes, uh, it just calls the Swagger generator here and uh, passes in the route cache provider, which is, provided to us from Nancy. So this is just a, an object that contains all of the routes that have been registered with Nancy. And I can just iterate through that um, with a for loop, grab the metadata object uh, off of that route that was defined previously, and then uh, create a, a Swagger a, a object, which is just a JSON object that's then, um, serialized either as JSON or YAML. Um, some other interesting parts. Um, currently I've hard coded in, uh, things like the security. So what, uh, you know, uh, what objects, uh, more, more parts need an authorization based on the rules that they have defined. Um, then, uh, at the top of the document, you can say, okay, so there needs to be an, uh, one of these three headers, uh, as a header. Um, to the request uh, for it to be authorized. Um, then uh, there's the definitions. So those are the types that I showed at the bottom of the document. So um, once once all of this is run through, it, it adds every type that it sees, it adds it to a, a registry object, which uh, pulls out all the information, like what properties are on the object, et cetera, et cetera. Those are then go into a definition, which is added to the bottom of the file. Um, uh, what else? I think that's the major parts. So the, the majority of the work still left to do is uh, the, well, the, ne the next thing to do is the body object. Not sure if it's here. Uh, bind. So um, when, 
uh, if if some data is passed in to the request uh, through the body it's instead, uh, the custom responders uh, either use well either call bind or bind and validate to get that body object out and, and deserialize it. Um, again, this is not easy to discover in in the examples where it's used, so it needs to be. Uh, there needs to be some sort of registration to say this action is going to ask for this type in the body um, so that then the Swagger code can reflect over that and, and pull that information out. Um, so that's the next step. Uh, then the other, the other step is what, um, what return types, or what responses there are. So um, when, when the execute occurs, it returns some sort of response object. Um, that, that information is not available easily as well. Again, it needs to be registered as part of the type. So uh, th th those are the three main aspects, parameters, body, and response um, for each call. So you can see up here, it's like parameters, the response, uh, which will have a body and uh, well in Swagger version 2 it considers body objects to be part of the parameters list as well. Um, but once those three things are done that's that's it that's basically all there is to defining a Swagger object uh, and so now uh, that once that's working the next thing to do would be to start using things like code generation to auto generate uh, the client side code, um, people in other ecosystems like Java or Python can take this document and generate their own client uh, APIs to work with our REST API, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's basically it. Cool. Any questions? So for the response codes, would you just do something similar putting a property on the responder that it has to access? Yeah, so again, probably like a register response, um, which will take the existing, like it's a 200 response, here's the description yep. of it. And then yeah, in the execute, just call that, um, like that field dot uh, get response or something. Yeah. And for the custom actions, could we just prevent them from uh, returning dynamic JSON and make them statically declare the types they accept in return? Yeah, so because uh, all the responders have to in inherit from this object and this object has the parameters field, uh, uh, sorry, property, um, my goal is to remove this so that then it's not possible to go to, to get a parameter this way. You have to do it through the registration of the... <coughs> um, but that parameters is for getting them out of the route, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that so one's... That, yeah, so that one, sorry. Oh, sorry, you know how the, the custom actions dynamically uh, <clears throat> grab the, or build the JSON to return? Uh, we could just stop them from doing that by making them declare the type, uh, make them declare a resource that they return. Yeah, yeah, for the response, you mean. Uh, for, for, yeah, for the return return response, like the, right. the thing that's returned here, you mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that way, um, so so yeah, it would be, yeah, I haven't haven't thought about how to how to cause that to break in the compiler yet, but yeah, yeah the idea the idea is to make sure that any any future responses you you write, uh, well, when you any um, responders sorry that you write in the future or if you update one that it will break in the compiler if you don't have the the thing set up to allow the swagger generation to occur. Um, and it, it, I, I've been trying to get this to, to break at compile time so that you don't have, you're not forced to test the API endpoint in order to make sure that you've set everything up right. Yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't uh, fully <coughs> worked through that problem yet, but that's, that's the goal. Um, so, yeah. Nice. Is the Swagger spec something that can be generated as an artifact in the build? Or does it have to be the uh, running system to get it? Uh, yes, it can. So, um, so I didn't actually 
mention that. Um, uh, so I've actually got a Swagger test as well. Um, where's the test? So in the uh, Endpoint API test, there's, uh, where did I put that? <coughs> There's a Swagger, Swagger Ascent test for both the JSON and the YAML. So um, it spins up, a, spins up a server, hits the endpoint, grabs that, tests it against um, an, an existing approved Swagger. So that as uh, if, if something in the API changes, you have to approve this test. Um, and that's, yeah, you can test, um, you can test the generation uh, this way. The other thing is, uh, it, I don't know if we want, like, is it possible to test um, the actual API automatically? I'm, I'm just wondering if, yeah. Like if you could take this Swagger JSON and go, okay, for each path in, in the Swagger definition, go and test it, test the endpoint. Um, that, I don't, I, I think that's less, that that would be harder to do, but certainly the, the thing is, once the automation is once the document is there, all the automation can come from that. Yeah. So no, I was just thinking, more. Well, this is something you could then publish. I assume the goal here is to replace the docs we have that are in GitHub. Ah, uh, that would be a goal. Yes. So yeah, well, that's the thing. Once you've got this doc, this document, you can generate it in any way. So the Swagger. Um, Swagger even provides a, a um, Swagger generator that you give templates to. Um, it's a Java app, so there's that. But um, uh, yeah, with that, they, they have a whole ecosystem around automating things from this Swagger file. So the first step was generating that file. Then once we've got that, we can do a lot of things with it. And yeah, is the intent to to expose any of the APIs that we host in the extensions? Uh, extensions. Can, the extensions can host API endpoints as well, but they don't use responders and you can't see them with compile time. <laughs> and so we <laughs> need some way to dynamically add things potentially out of the extensions if they want to contribute to this. Yeah, that's interesting. <sighs> So we're moving, we're moving to a world where we're trying to make more things built as extensions. We'll need to just have a think about how we do that. And we're deliberately not using responders. So yeah, so I suppose just as part of this, as part of this, as it's building this Swagger spec, it needs to check the um, Yeah, and then, and then we need to build some things into the extensions so that they can compile up <coughs> a fragment of the spec to yeah. contribute or something like that, maybe. Yeah. Or might be other ways. Yeah. Like that. I'll, I'll catch up with you about that after. Yeah, sure. It's um, because uh, the, the, the spec is just a JSON object. The um, if the route is can be generated, uh, sorry, the operations. So Swagger calls them operations yeah. um, for for each route. Um, if an extension could provide its own operations to be added to the spec that should be pretty good. Yeah, we, we do something very similar to contribute to the configure command for the command line interface to the server, so. Yeah. Add yeah. Somewhat similar there, I think. Maybe that works. Sure. There was a lot of, uh, I, I, I pulled a lot of um, the initial code from uh, looking at the documenter. Uh, the, um, yeah, the yeah. Octopus documenter. So that that got me some things like the descriptions of each route, but um, yeah, there wasn't. The other the other problem is um, just talking about that. The when when you have a custom uh, action like this, you've got the code to execute um, the route here in this class, but the description is then defined here in the module, the Nancy module, which is a bit of a separation. Um, it'd be nice if we could, um, so for example, um, yeah, so this, this class is, is one of those classes that takes an ID. Um, so given we're already defining this class to, to 
to say, okay, the ID is, th this takes an ID, it'd be nice if we could define the description of this uh, here in this class as well, rather than being in an anti job. So, um, yeah, it, there's sort of a separation where it's like some things are defined in one thing. Um, there's also, uh, what was it, uh, contract, I think. Contract. Um, I can't remember. Um, there was a there was a thing which defines all of the routes as well for the home API, um, and that that is now a third place that's also defining these routes um, here. And it's, it's describing them slightly differently. So we have all of this information for one thing spread across multiple classes and that's not ideal for editing if you want to just edit one route and update its information. So um, ultimately I'm trying to pull all of these Diff, uh, different sources of information into one location and then go, okay, now generate all of our API from that, that one source of truth. Right. Cool. Very nice. I'll stop sharing. All right. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everyone.